get that going on Zoom. Okay. Um, ah, I kind of, I kind of find that. Um, we could also try if you, if you go live on yours, I could try joining you. That works too. Okay, cool. All right, let's I'll do that. Do that. Thank you guys for the patience. We're setting this all up so the homies on Instagram can join too. Dude, we got Sao Paulo, Brazil. Man. Okay, cool. Dude, this is awesome. Dude, Chris Dodds. I didn't know you were from Newcastle, dude. Sick. Um, Bad Boombox is here. What's up? <laughs> um, yeah, just while we're... Pat, let me know when you're live, by the way, dude. All right, and... two minutes. I think that's going live. Sorry, I've never done this. I've been thinking about doing an Instagram live for, like for ages and I've never done it. So you, you... No way, dude. This is, <laughs> Let's this go. Is new... no, I... <laughs> this is new territory for me. It's not fucking working, too, Zach. Okay, don't trip. Um, nah. Yo, guys, I'm, I'm just curious just to, so I can get a better sense of who's here. Oh, wait, hold on. There's more people I need to admit into the chat or into this thing. Where can I do that? Admit all. More How people are filing in. Justin, how do you do the Instagram live? Um, okay, so swipe left, like you're gonna do a, an Instagram story. Yeah, yeah. And then at the bottom, there's like options for like story, oh. reels, and live. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Did that work? Yeah, press it, it's not doing anything though. <laughs> um, oh, for fuck's sake. No, dude, don't trip. It's not that big of a deal. Um, yeah, Pat, I, I don't know if it's like, so it's, it's like the button isn't working. Yeah, like, um, <laughs> oh, there, there, I think it's, it says it's checking connection. Oh, I'm now live. Hey, oh, yeah, let's yes. go. Right. Okay, hold on. Sweet. Let me refresh. Can Boom. you see it? Yes. And make sure your phone volume is all the way down. Right. Let's see. Request to join. Boom. All right. Check, take a look at your phone. All right, more people are still filing into the Zoom. Okay, let me know if that works. Sweet. Um, I can't see your request. I can see loads of requests of people. I can't find yours. <laughs> You're too popular, dude. You're too popular. Where is yours? Right, I'm trying to find you. Send another request, Justin. All right, I'll give it a try. Hold on. Let's see. Yep, and sending right now. But yeah, I imagine. Right, I'm trying to go live with Justin J. By the way, I'm just trying to find these requests. Um. Cool. Yo, hey guys in the Zoom chat, while we're getting this sorted, who are you? Who who are you listening to right now? Patty T. <laughs> damn right, damn right. Comment in the chat, like who, what kind of music are you feeling? Who's been songs, artists, labels, Joko, Elliot Adamson, the man. Oh, nice. Yeah, Justin, I kind of see you. Uh, actually, two sex. Ah, I've got you. Right, oh, there no you way. are. Right, I've sent, I've sent you a request there. Okay, perfect. Can you see that? Yeah, we do. We're in, baby. Ah, right, okay. Is that weird? Yeah, perfect. Ah, there you are. Nice. So. Yo, right. hey, every <laughs> right, everyone, everyone who's watching on Instagram, um, Pat and I are doing a little lecture. If you head to my bio, there's a link so you can join the uh, the Zoom party, and that's where we're going to be like checking the comments and stuff. Um, but if you want to just watch on your phone, that works too. Um, alrighty, guys, if more people are still joining into the Zoom room. Um, this is great. Okay, so yo, without further ado. Everyone, make some noise for Patrick Topping, the man, the legend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, Let's it's go. Good. It's, good hey. to it's good to speak to you. Dude, it is so good to see you, man. I feel like the last time I saw you, um, it was Desert Hearts, the yes. City Festival. In and LA. In LA. And dude, you, um, it was so dope. And you closed out the night you know, uh, you like sped up the BPM like <laughs> to like 150 or something and played like a proper crazy like rave tune. <laughs> it got quite heavy there. That was amazing, that gig. Dude, that so, so dope. 
that was one of those ones actually my wife was with us and she stayed in the hotel room mm-hmm. and then afterwards I was like I cannot believe you missed that gig it was fucking amazing so yeah she's kicking herself but yeah that yeah that was nice to see you that night that was unexpected I was just playing and then suddenly I just seen you just behind us like that. I didn't even know you were going to be there dude I snuck in there <laughs> <laughs> dude um mate man anyway your EP man your EP is absolutely sick man honestly <laughs> dude it's stupid I, I i couldn't actually believe it when you sent us it um i obviously i've hardly done any gigs this year because of what's going on but i did i did some social distance ones and i opened me set with it every time uh oh, trick or treat yeah. it's just like it just sets the tone you know what i mean it's like you've arrived fuck <laughs> off <laughs> it's it, it's stupid it's it's uh, it's one of the maddest tunes i've heard so uh, congrats and thanks for releasing it with trick Dude, that fires me up, man. And yeah, it's it's wild because uh, it was completely inspired by, I don't know how to say his name, Ewan McVicker. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I heard um, his EP had come out, I think just before the EP I did with Elliot. And oh, right. <laughs> I was like, this is insane. And I need to like, it just, I was so inspired that I made that trick or treat song like, right after i heard it <laughs> ah that's cool that's cool you know be buzzing with that yeah, yeah. You've, you've, you've took that kind of rave sound and you've just upped the ante to like just ridiculous levels <laughs> but then the other, the other stuff the mm-hmm. uh the, the b-side that's like it reminds us of all paul johnson like in a good way and like thomas yeah. Ban- yeah. thomas bangalda stuff crazy <laughs> dude i'm so glad you're done with it it's uh yeah it, it's funny because um when it comes to making music you know i feel like there's some times where a track will come really quickly like for trick or treat and the third song on the ep i made those both like in an hour hour and a half like one sitting just had a bunch of fun cranked them out and the track you're talking about what's up it took forever i there were like multiple versions and it was like a tough one to crack um, and I was pretty unsure about it. I was like, I don't know if I did a good job here. And um, Oh, dude. you nailed it here. You know, this <laughs> infinite. It's like an electric band. How, how did you make that? That is crazy. Dude, it's just uh, Ableton um, analog, like the one of the built-in plugins. Uh, stock shit. <laughs> just fucking around with, with the knobs and whatnot. Um, dude, I'm hyped you dig it. And uh yeah, man, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's crazy for those t- for those tunes to be out. I can't believe you've been playing them like at the <laughs> socially distanced raves and stuff. It's uh, it's insane, man. Um, well, yo, I, I I have I'm hyped that you're you're down to kick it because I do have a bunch of questions that I'm just like I'm curious about. So yeah, I don't know if that. this you know I don't know if this will relate to to the label super like con- directly, but. A while ago, I saw you started posting clips of you playing Machina rave music <laughs> in your yeah, DJ yeah. sets. And, uh, ooh. <laughs> uh, Haley's just saying there's like an echo on uh, your voice. Do you reckon it'll be better if I go in the headphones? Maybe. Jeez, I'll try cool. And Maybe, can you hear us? Yeah. Check, check. Yeah, maybe that's better. Okay. Hail, Haley, Haley, Haley. Can you check whether the sound's okay on Instagram Live there? Yeah. Dude, Haley's Dude, saving Haley's the day. Saving Let's go. Day. Yeah, Let's she, go. she was saying it was echoing. To be honest, I, I've never done this setup before, you know, like with us on Zoom and on Instagram Live at the same time. So, pretty right. ambitious. Someone said it sounds, <laughs> someone said it sounds good there. So, yeah, sweet. Okay. Right, let's go. Dude, so here. Right. I, 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 <laughs> here, let me, let me try to pull up this little video because it's so epic. Um, can you tell me a little bit about like Machina and oh, this, right. the, your, your relationship to it, like growing up in Newcastle? Right, well, it's, it's not a music from around here. It's Spanish mm-hmm. and it's from Valencia, but mm-hmm. it, was, it was big in the 90s um in valencia and then it made its way over to the northeast of england 
somehow. I don't really know the origins of it, but it just becomes such a huge sound here. And mm -hmm. um, it still is, there's still a massive subculture involved in that sound. There's like loads of DJs and uh, over who are who are famous all around here for, for playing that sound. And um, what happens over here is though, they, they do it with MCs on top. I don't, I don't know if that was what they were doing in Valencia or not, but it's become like a Northeast subculture where you've got Makeda music mm -hmm. coupled with um, MCs on top. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's it been something that I've been into since school. So like I, I've been into it for like, I don't know, like nearly 20 years really. And uh, it, it, so it, actually it's probably the first dance music that I, that I was into really. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's really fast. It's like for, for people who don't know what it is, it's like between about 140 BPM up to about 180 sometimes. And um, it gets known as like Spanish techno, but it's 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 not dark. It's more like happy hardcore. Um, and yeah, I love it. And it's been some I've always been into. And then I've just started. Um, I've just started. Uh, playing it a little bit recently because I mean I've been DJing for uh, years but it wasn't really Makina at, at all and um, I just but I've always loved it so basically I was doing a club night in Newcastle and um, I had this idea to just do it in the second room just as a as a little daft thing because it's kind of like the um, like loads of people love it in the northeast who like house and techno and disco music and stuff like that it's the type of stuff that they uh like grew, grew up on um and so I, I knew it would it would work well because there's a lot of like crossover but it's a it's a completely separate scene and i'm not part of that scene and i'm not trying to be part of that scene i'm just a fan i'm just a fan of it and i was and i've just been doing it just for some fun now and again mm -hmm. and I've, I've done like I've only done three sets of it now I did one at Glastonbury Festival uh, in England which was just insane and I didn't know how that was going to go down because it was out, outside the northeast and um but it, it went off it was fucking mental people couldn't get in the tent and like people were coming up to us and uh, they um they uh, some of them didn't know I was going to be doing Makina and they were like I seen them later on at the festival and they're like, yeah, what the fuck was that? It was mental, like the maddest music I've ever heard. Like pe people lose their minds to it. Yeah. So anyway, it's just like, uh, so I started doing it as um, like a little secondary set now and again. But then recently I started incorporating one or two tracks in, in my normal set dependent very mm. rarely, very rarely depends where I am. I've, I mean, when I've the crowd it. earns it, when they yeah. earn it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been, I've done it in Sunderland, which is in the northeast, and I've done it in in Newcastle uh, once or twice in, in my normal set, just a little bit at the end. But it's not something that I, that I that I do anywhere. But the weird thing is, I've had requests to do it everywhere in like Australia, Glasgow, yes. <laughs> Liver, Liverpool. Like, the, there's so many people who are into it. But like, to be honest. Um, it's not something I, I want to make too much of a of a habit doing. I mean, I like it, but it's not really it's not really my thing. You know what okay, I mean? that, that's funny. Here, just so that everyone has some context, let me uh, share some uh, some uh, some of the moments here. Like I found this. <laughs> Like <laughs> that was fucking crazy. Dude. Yeah, man. Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen a crowd go off like that, Justin? Dude, no. Like, come on. That's. Oh, that's I've got wrong. one from Glastonbury here. Do you want to see oh. one from Glastonbury? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that. Dude, the, the people, are, it, people are here for it. <laughs> it's a bit messy. <laughs> Mate, how much was it bouncing in there, man? You can share, Colin. <laughs> Get in. Charlie, that's unreal, dude. Charlie, um, 
Charlie, where are you from? Are you, are you from Liverpool? Yeah, Liverpool. Liverpool, I see Scousers, love it and all. Scousers are always asking. We saw, we saw you at Glastonbury the next day as well, outside Carl Cox. Do you remember oh, yeah, 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 that was amazing. <laughs> dude, that's unreal. Thank you for, for sharing, dude. Um, it's, it's crazy, man. Like, well, well so I, I brought this up because I was curious, like, you know, you mentioned this is one of the first types of dance music that you got into. Like, what was your entry point to DJing and what kind of music were you first playing when you began DJing? Sorry, the what was that? I was fucking on with the headphones. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> what were you first DJing when you, what kind of music did you well, start all with? All right, I started with house and techno. That's Got what it. I started with. Yeah, um, that's when I uh, I went to a B-Fair and uh, I was also into dance music then, but when the first time I went to Ibiza, actually, I, I, the nights I went to was like David Guetta and Swedish House Mafia and stuff like that in 2008, it was. Yeah. And then um, I came back in, in 2009, I saw Sven Vaf, DJ and Luciano and people like that. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I flipped into like um, kind of more proper, uh, like underground house, house and techno. And then that's when I got... Um, that's when I got some decks and then that's when I enrolled with Point Blank and I did an um, a online tutorial with them and it was actually in uh, Miminal Techno. It was a four-week course in Miminal Techno. Yes. So that, that was my introduction into making music was via that. So like DJing and making music for me has always came from, from House and Techno, yeah. Dude, that's unreal. Um, you know, and and... It's interesting because I know the, the focus of this chat, like you want to talk about trick and the label, you know, I think understanding kind of your, your sort of like influences getting into it. It's, it's interesting to me. Are, how are we doing with sound issues? Are, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's, I think it sounds, does that, does that sound all right to everyone or is it, or is it uh, sounding shit? Well, I'm still getting a little bit of echo, um, but let me, I think, why don't we just end it on Instagram? If you're watching on Instagram, I have a link in yeah. my bio to get the Zoom link and you can join here. So yeah, yeah there's a link there's a link in my stories if you swipe up, you can uh, get the link as well to the Zoom because being just not talking on Zoom. So nice one. Right. Take it easy, guys. All right. See you in a bit. Yeah, dude, I was hearing that echo on my end too and just trying to ignore it. <laughs> um but yeah, so you know when you let me know when you're all set. Um, yeah, sweet man. Dude, you know, I think it, it, you know, I asked about Machina in part because you know, I feel like there's, I get all this like really like, you know, 90s, you know, nostalgic, you know, euphoric feelings when I listen to a lot of the music on Trek. And, and I'm curious, like, you know, do you think about style when you're, you know, listening to tracks and demoing it? Or is it just kind of like, an intuitive thing and you're just kind of feeling it and a song will like speak to you and you don't really question it. How, well, how would you yeah. describe that? That's a good question. I think like with Trick, I'm trying not to be too um, too wide and in, in, I mean, I'm trying not to be too narrow. Like some labels are very uh, like genre specific or even more like sub genre specific really. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. it's like a very most labels are very very niche, um, which is cool, and and they like find their niche and they nail their niche. Um, I mean, but with Trick, I'm trying to cast the net a little bit wider than that and not be known for a certain sound. But yeah. you you know you know the phrase um, Jack of all trades, master of none. Well, that, I don't I don't that's what I don't want to be known as that. Like I I but I do want to be known for loads of different stuff, but hopefully, hopefully it's not um, throwing people off because it, it kind of is hopping about all over the place. But I'm really, I'm just hoping for Trick to be known as like, a, um, hopefully it'll get known as like a taste maker label. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Where it can, it could be tech house, house, techno, disco, electro, possibly even like electronic pop pop stuff or like mm -hmm. like miminal um oh, i've just seen someone saying where do we send demos to trick yeah so we've got the, the so the the email address is demos at tricklabel.co.uk 
if anyone wants to send in demo. Yeah, so so basically, uh, with with trick and what I want on the label, I, I'm not thinking too much about uh, how, the sound of it because I think when you go down that avenue, it makes it hard to release certain other things. You know what I mean? If you're known for a very specific type of say percussive tech house rolling stuff and, and that's that's what you put out. If you suddenly put out like a massive electro rave thing like yours, people would be like, <laughs> well, what's the, so like the idea is that we put out loads of different uh, sounds so like so people are expecting to hear loads of different stuff so they're not like wow like what, what you're doing that's weird i want it to be known as quite eclectic but it's not that eclectic and really because it still is centered around house and techno like i'm yeah, not going to be yeah. releasing like an indie band or, or, or something like that I, I, I can't see anything like that happening but within the remit of house and techno i like to think that it's kind of anything goes <laughs> And I, I guess the main thing I'm looking for is, is it, it well, on the A side of a, um, of a release, it's, does it, is it something I want to play in my sets? That's right, the main right. thing for me. It, that, that's the, like the litmus test. It's like, if I get sent a demo and I want to put it into my set and I, and I played in my set and I repeatedly played in my set, then I know deep down that that's right for trick because that's what I've kind of decided. Like if, if it's good enough for my set, that's what I'm going to put out. So it's very, very much is club oriented dance floor music because it's dictated via my set. But when you're talking about like the um, Did we lose Pat? <laughs> um yeah if you're if you're watching can you give me some thumbs up if my connection is still working okay cool so it's <laughs> pat yeah. hopefully he comes back mm -hmm. we'll see um yeah you know i guess also in the meantime can everyone uh comment some questions that you want addressed over the course of this we'll do we'll probably do like a proper q a um at the end but it's good for me to you know I'll catch a vibe of what people are interested in hearing. Um, let's see. Oh, fantastic voyage. Yo, carnage. <laughs> Is that the real carnage? <laughs> um, dude, <laughs> uh, fantastic voyage demo email. Um, it's my email. <laughs> Just DM me on, on Instagram. That's the best way. <laughs> Yo, carnage, if that's you, can you hop on the mic? <laughs> dude, um, that, that'd be tight. Bad Boombox, how you doing, man? <laughs> I'm chilling. Good to see you guys. Unreal, dude. Unreal. Um, yeah, let me also, while while we're getting this technical stuff sorted, let me shoot Pat another message on Instagram just to make sure he uh, he's good to get back in because I think he probably just got fully disconnected. Um, but yeah, you know, to what Pat's saying, it's, it is pretty interesting. Is anyone like, you know, surprised to hear that? Like a label that doesn't care about just one sound. Like to me, that's a, it's definitely a pretty interesting approach that is quite different to a lot of, um, a lot of other labels here. Uh, we lost you, bro. I'm texting him. All right. Um, but yeah, you know, what what Pat was saying, it's funny because because I relate to with my own label, Fantastic Voyage, and I do think it's uh, it is really cool when you have that flexibility with a label to, you know, put out different types of music. Um, you know, especially because I think when you when you're an artist and you're making music, it's so hard sometimes to be like, oh, I want to get songs signed to a label but you also want to express yourself <laughs> and make music that you like <laughs> that is, you know, representative of your tastes and your musical interests. And, um, you know, yeah, that's why I'm just such a big fan of trick. It's cause I feel like the label where you can just like have some fun and mess around, <laughs> do what you want to do. And maybe it'll work even if it's not exactly a certain style, which I think is, yeah, it's really cool. I'm curious. Does anyone like, does anyone here, give me a thumbs up if you've ever sent a demo out to a label yeah cool cool yeah and um <laughs> oh pat's coming back let's go <laughs> yes hold on 
I just clicked admit. Uh, let's see if this works. Um, but yeah, for everyone watching, I recommend send as many demos to as many labels as you can if, if that's something that you're interested in doing. And I feel like never take it personally if, you know, you know, if it doesn't fit their vibe, it's it's such a crapshoot at the end of the day, um, especially with many of these labels that have such specific focuses. Um, unlike Trick, Pat, where are you I'm, back? I think I'm back. Yeah, oh, yeah we I missed think you, dude. <laughs> We're yeah. back, baby. Dude, I don't know, um, where, I don't know where, I, where did he lose us there? Where uh, was it? Oh, so we, you know, you were just talking about your, you know, about your intention not to be too specific with the genre curation of Trek. And dude, I just want to say, man, it's like, I, I think that is like a, you know, that is a balance of like, you know, where you say you don't want to be a, like a master of none type of situation. And I, I feel like Trick, like, obviously I'm a huge fan. <laughs> so, uh, like the way that you've, you've curated such musical diversity on the label while still having such a clear like personality like and it's I mean it's just because I feel like it's just you man like you know I just hear the it's like yeah just like I hear you I hear you through the the voice of the label no matter if it's a techno record uh, like a disco house thing a rave record <laughs> um you know I feel like that that you and McVicker remix of Mura is almost like <laughs> it's like high speed rave shit and it, it doesn't matter yeah. like the BPMs the style I feel like your your personality shines through um yeah and... that's the mm -hmm. sorry 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 I interrupted you <laughs> no no please what were you gonna say no well that's it that's the that's the idea with the label uh I, I don't know where I got cut off there because I, I went on a fucking tangent I was talking and talking and talking I didn't hear anything back from you and well, I, I, didn't know if you were, I didn't know whether you were listening or whether it had been cut off for fucking ages <laughs> but um anyway yeah, I, I was going on one about the about the label so basically the the thing is to to be quite wide um but still really within uh, house and techno um but the the main thing is did you get this bit where i was saying it's basically stuff that i want to play in my dj sets got it mm -hmm. yeah so that's basically what what drives everything like if i if i play some if i get sent a demo and i want to put it in my dj set and i play it out and i repeatedly play it out then i know that's got to come out because that's the that's the thing i've decided that it the the label is very much club oriented music that's what i want it to be so it's it, what i play in my dj sets dictates what what comes out on the label and um but th that is quite hard at the moment because usually the the test would be if i get a demo if i end up playing it in a set and if i if it stays in my set for more if I play it once, maybe I might not sign it, but like if I find myself repeatedly playing, I'm like, I definitely need to put that up. But at the minute, when there's no gigs or, or there's gigs or there's been a few social distance ones and there's been a, uh, some streams and stuff like that, but I'm not playing anywhere near as much as I, I used to play. So I'm actually finding it harder to, to A&R now than, than it used to be. Um, I don't know. Is, is, I don't know if is that something I, that you found or, or, or even with making music, does it feel different to you now? Because you don't have that type of uh, like immediate test. You know what I mean? If the yeah. club. It, 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 dude, I, I hear you 100%. Um, it's funny because I think uh, I, I'm a pretty strange person to talk about like this stuff because when I was DJing a lot, I kind of was like, I don't even want to make club music. I want to make like indie music. And I, I also do shows with like a band and stuff. And so I was like, yeah. I just, it's like, I was like, I just want to do something totally different. And then the year of COVID without DJing, making club music was almost like a way to feel nostalgic about going out for me, which I think is a very, I'm, I'm, I know like most DJ friends of mine, they were like, yeah, dude, I can't even think about club music being stuck in my bedroom or like my house, which, which is fair. So for me, it was like this weird <laughs> counterbalance, but um, I, I do, I do hear you on that process of like, you know, the, you know, the litmus test being like your yeah, DJ set and is. having that removed. Um, here's a question for you, dude. Like, um, you know, 
I'm, I'm, my goal with, you know, is trying to like see how we can kind of paint the picture for your, your intuition when, uh, when it comes to like listening to, you know, these songs. Yeah. Um, do you ever know immediately? Like, ever, I'm sure it's very rare, but like, do you ever know, like, within that, like, like first listen or without the DJ set, are you ever just like, yep, there's no questions. Does that ever happen ever? <laughs> yes, of course it does. And it happened with your one trick or treat. I no swear to God. No, I did. As soon as I heard it, I knew I was like, that is a monster. And then I need to put it out. But yeah, it works two ways. It's like some tracks just hit you straight away and you just know. And then other ones, I kind of sit on for a while and really contemplate them and then Usually it's the uh, test them out my DJ set, see how long they stay in, or if not now, it's just like listen to them a bit at home and like really sit on them. But yeah, there's, there's some where you just know straight away. There's some songs where you just know within like two seconds. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you just hear the sound of the of the way the drums are, the synth. Like that's the thing with demos. Like I, I can usually tell this sounds stupid because like, I, I, I must miss a lot and I must... I mustn't, uh, stuff must go under the net, which is quality and I must miss it. But like within like five to 10 seconds or sometimes even less, but not always, I can tell whether I like a song or not. Usually, cause I listen to it for a few seconds and I'll, I'll jump along to a little section. And usually if I didn't like the start, I usually won't be into the, the bit later on as well. Like you can, it's weird, you can tell, but obviously, if I listen to stuff all the way through, it it would be better, and I, I, and I, I must miss things, but it, just with the sheer volume that come in, it's I, I can't, I don't have the uh, the capacity to be able to listen to them all because I would just I would just be snowed snowed under with it. But then, sorry to, to jump back to what you were saying about whether how decide whether I want to sign something well with the a side it is definitely is it good for the club but with the b sides and the other tracks on the ep it's not so much about my dj sets and that it's it's more then i'm thinking more about home listening and streaming and also the artist and can showing some range to the artist and showing some range to the label as well so like the way i look at it is if you nail like a club ready a side and then the, that then allows a lot of freedom on the rest of the EP to, to, to go in different ways. And, and I like to try and do that. And that's why with, with your EP, um, just even in those three tracks, there's, there's a variety there. And I, 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 like, I like to try and do that as well. Dude, that is awesome. And it's funny because you, <laughs> you jumped to my, my next question was going to be like, do you ever know immediately that it's not the right fit and, and hearing that it's you can you can tell within like two to ten seconds you know I think even just listening to the intro I mean I think you know it's to me that it makes so much work. sense it doesn't but, always but, work sometimes but, I listen to like five seconds and I'll and, I, and I'll be in my head oh this isn't what I have in mind and mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll flick to two minutes in the song and I'll get a really pleasant surprise and I'll be like actually I was wrong two seconds ago. This is a fucking monster. So like, it's not foolproof, but like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's the it's the way I, it's the way I listen to them. No, I mean it it's, makes it's sense. It's not just demos, though. It's it's it, it's promos and also on Beatport and all that. I'm I'm flicking yeah. through songs really quick, all the time. Dude, I mean, I'm sure everyone here who's ever gone digging, you know, for music can relate to this. It's like you, because because yeah. I, I think what it is is like you know, in part, maybe, tell me if this resonates with you, Pat. It's like, whether you're listening to demos or DJing for tracks, if you hear, a, if you press play on a song, within the first couple seconds, you can kind of hear the aesthetic of the song, mostly through like, like the just the drum textures and the way it kind of feels. You can tell if you're listening to like, you know, a new like Tiesto record or like a new, you know, thing on Hot Creations or a new thing that's like a vinyl only dusty, <laughs> thing from the 90s you know like the like if something uh, yeah. sounds like 30 years old it'll sound very different than like you know it, like a like an edm record and I, I think there's a lot of a lot of that textural stuff that you hear like how big are the drums is it like a dubstep snare versus like a 909 clap you know i think you can kind of pick up on that those aesthetics within those like two seconds and you, you know it'll help you kind of 
you don't need to listen to every song all the way through to know if it's going to fit in your DJ sets or not. And I think that's, is that, is that maybe like a good yeah, like that, reference? That is, it, that is it. And I've just noticed on the questions on the side, cause I was, I think it was in response to me saying, I don't listen to all, all of the songs all the way through. Mm -hmm. Someone said I should get a bigger A&R team to, uh, to listen to them first and then send them through. That's actually interesting because that is something which I tried for a little while. Um, because when I when I launched the label, I listened to all the demos myself for the first few months. And then what happened was we launched the uh, event side and I was I was touring heavily at the time doing a lot of gigs and we launched the, the trick events. We had five events within about a month. And um, that was actually when I seen you in, a, in LA actually. Uh, we had just we had done the events. It was like the end of November 2019. They finished. So around that time, I was really uh, I was just feeling stretched, and I couldn't I couldn't reply to I couldn't listen to all the demos in time. Um, so I got my tour manager, Morgan, who uh, comes with us to most of my when he comes to all my European gigs. He doesn't really come over to the states. He, he has been over. Uh, once he doesn't come to like uh, Australia, anything like that. It's just it's Europe. But anyway, he um he knows my sets more than anyone else because he, he listens to the most of them. So he knows what I'm into. So if there was anyone who would be good at A and R, and it's him because he has the most access to my sets. He knows what he knows what I like. So he was a perfect person as well because he's on the road with us a lot of the time. So Morgan started um looking at looking over the demo email um inbox for a few months i think he did it for about i don't know four or five months what because i felt like i, I couldn't keep on top of it and i felt I'd, I'd do it to the people who were sending in demos to, for them to get listened to uh within good time and i and I, I wasn't getting around to it myself so so morgan was doing it and it was good but i've took it i've now took it back and uh, Morgan's not involved with it at the mo at the moment. And um, even though it was good having Morgan do that because he would listen to them all. He would he would get the ones that he thought I would be into. Then he would send me like what he his picks of them, and then I would listen to them. And it was good. And that's how Morgan actually find you found you and McVicker first because Morgan no, gave me no. Morgan gave me you McVickers and Morgan Cole. Someone's just said there. So there was a few people Morgan found via that way, and it was good. But then, uh, so that was the end of 2019, Morgan took over. And he started doing it into the start of 20, 20, uh, 2020. And then when the pandemic hit, and I had more free time on my hands, I said to Morgan, should I, uh, I'll, I would like to take over it again, because I really want to listen to every single thing. I've got more time now. I'm able to, so I've started taking over it again now. So, and I listen to absolutely every every one that comes in. I listen to it. We've got like an automatic response on there. Like, if, if you don't get a reply within a month, then it unfortunately not not what, what I had in mind. So it's like, if people could like, I would love it if people could give us like a month to to, to reply to listen to them and I, I try and listen to everything within a month and I'm hoping that 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 all might reply like kind of lets people know okay that's the window to kind of wait and if it's longer than that month then unfortunately it's not what, what I had in mind that time but um so yeah I've sort of listened to all of them and what I've found is there's loads of stuff I found loads of stuff and I, I wish Morgan even though he's done a good job I wish he never did do it for those months because I wonder what what I might have missed you know what I mean because even though he's the perfect man for the job me and him don't have exactly the same taste and like so I think I might have missed something so even when I go back to full-time gigging I'm going to try and rearrange my time differently and I'm going to try and keep on top of it myself and hopefully it doesn't get to the point where I ask Morgan for his help again I'm really going to try and uh keep on top of it myself because I just feel like it's such a personal thing and even though it did yield some really good signings Morgan doing that I think since I've started doing it myself I've signed even more stuff more stuff uh we've got so much stuff there and um 
it's really exciting and I'm so grateful for every demo that we get and I've, that's why I'm going to try my best to keep on top of it but like uh, the, the the volume of demos is crazy. I mean, we'll get something like, I, I don't know, three, 400 a month come in, um, <laughs> which is which is loads. I mean, like, uh, it's not like I'm sat around doing fuck all. Like, I, like I'm a workaholic. I work all, all the time on, on, on various stuff. So it's, um, it, but I do feel bad about Morgan <laughs> to doing the demos for a while, but we'll see how we get on with it. Um, but yeah, the plan is to uh, keep keep listening to them all myself. Yeah, dude, huge respect, man. Like that's the, you know I can tell you you just care so deeply about you know you know listening to these songs and you know uh, giving giving the songs a chance, man. Like to hear you know oh there could have been some good ones that fell through the cracks. Like you know it's such a, it's a <laughs> dude just a beautiful uh, you know like. Yeah mindset that you have towards it um and respect because you know dude listening through 300 400 demos a month is you know it's a huge number um i'm kind of curious like just you know just so that people can kind of be a little bit more uh understanding of like how much <laughs> of like the intensity of, of that the, that role like i guess what um when when it's how do you approach your demo listening like do you do it are you kind of organized? Like, do you have like a time and a place where you like just crank through as many as you can? Or do you kind of go, you know, here and there, you'll listen to a few across the whole month. What's your process for just getting well, through that music? I, I, let, I didn't go on them for a couple of months recently because, uh, which was longer than I, I wanted to. I tried to try to listen to them all within four weeks, within a month, but I left it two months because I was working in the studio myself on my own music, right? And the, my mindset in the studio is, to be honest, I've had like a massive period of writer's block yeah, and yeah. I've, been, I've been struggling to make my own music. So I've had to prioritize, like I've had to like, okay, I'm not gonna speak to my management. I'm not gonna be on WhatsApp to my friends. I'm not gonna keep up my social media posts. I have to switch my phone off and I have to like, really focus on the studio and part of the the demos thing I, I ended up not listening to some for a while because I just wanted to get creative in my head with what I was doing and to get in the zone there so I ended up but when I went back to the demos I had like two months of, of demos there and there was like 700 emails uh, oh my God. <laughs> 700 there was 700 emails in the inbox and like some of them are like a few different links with a few different songs and all that. So I, it must have been like so many, like over a thousand songs, like easily. And that took that took us like a, a couple of days solid of like like 12 hour days, like two 12 hour days oh. to get through that, <laughs> listening, replying and all that. And like it's quite a mad process because you just get into like a mad like it's, it's, it's hypnotic. But um, yeah, I've got on top of it now. And uh, I've actually started making, um, I've actually had a little breakthrough with my my music as well. So really? like I'm not in that place because it, it, it really affects us. If I, if I can't make something, I start get really bad. I think it's called imposter syndrome. And I like, I start, even though I've been in that position, because with me, when I make music, um, I'm not one of those guys who can be like, right, I've got this in my mind and just go and do it. I'm not, I'm not that good at making music. I'm more like, I can keep working at it and working at it and eventually I'll get something something I like. I'm quite a slow worker. But when, um, but when it's not going and I can't get anything I like, every time, even though I've been there hundreds of times, maybe thousands of times now of trying to make tunes, I, I literally start thinking to myself, oh, I'm never going to be able to make a song again. I don't know. I don't know. It's just not working. And I have to really start doubting myself. And I was in that place myself for ages. So I couldn't even like, I was trying to get myself out of that because it, it's so weird. People might think it's weird to hear me saying that because I, I've put out uh, quite a lot of music now, but I still get, I still get caught up in my own head. And I take yeah. my, and it and it and it brings it brings us down. And I leave the studio and I'm like I'm feeling like down. And then I have a breakthrough and I'm like feeling el elated. It's crazy, 
But anyway, I'm in a good place with my own music at the minute and I'm back on top of the demos and I got I got rid of all those ones. So now the way I'm doing it now is I'm trying to uh, get on to every week. I'm not leaving it for a month or, or two months. Like every week I'm trying to clear the inbox. Um, so yeah, I don't want to let it pile up again. And when I start gigging more, I'm going to have to make sure I, I'm on it more uh, more regularly because um, it's 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 not good letting it pile up. And also, I miss things as well because if someone sends it to me and I don't get back in time, they, then they're going to send it to a different label. There's been a, there's been a couple times where I've wanted to sign something and I've been too late to it, um, which is shit. But I, I'm I'm trying my best. <laughs> Dude, huge respect, man. Um, and uh, you know, I think everyone can relate to that those that feeling of like imposter syndrome or being stuck in your head. Um, and you know, I, it's it's funny that you, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm curious, dude. Like, just uh, take a little brief tangent um, on on your you know experience as an artist because you're you're the real deal, dude. You you're an amazing producer, like musician, and you also happen to run a label um, and, and doing both is like two separate full-time jobs and you you are miraculously like crushing it at both. And, you know, I think everyone could be, could understand like the need for like being patient with like that internal battle that sometimes pops up in the studio. Um, here's a question for you, dude. Like, yeah, I mean, most recently, you know, dude, it's so cool to hear that you may have been struggling a bit and then you, overcame it was I'm just curious was there what did that moment look like when the tides started uh you know shifting in your favor and the good vibes started coming back well you know what it was it's a, it was a very specific issue uh it's basically because I, I'm, I'm working on an EP at the moment where I've done all the vocals no way yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like it's a it's a at the minute I've done two tracks and I've got the third one on the go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I did I did the first track. Uh, I did all the vocals myself. I recorded them myself, wrote, wrote them and recorded them uh, myself. And then I uh, then I didn't I didn't go I didn't try again for ages doing my own stuff. I, I ended up making these songs with Haley. And then I went back to to doing it. And I was like, oh shit, I can't do it. I can't do it. So it was just because it's a, it's a, it's been a new process to me rec recording vocals anyway because before this i'd always worked with uh samples really or if i had uh vocals that we had been recreated you can get you can get vocalists who can rec recreate stuff or if i've done a collaboration with someone and they've supplied the vocals i've never done my own vocals before until i started working with alien and then i started doing my own vocal vocals mm -hmm. so it's been a massive learning curve for me just on like setting up the microphones and editing the editing the actual recording of the vocal and like write writing lyrics and all that it's been like it's, it's been a hard learning curve for me and that that was what uh that was what i was stuck on really That's and then huge. <laughs> and then i've managed to uh, to have done the ep and uh well i've done two songs and the third one's nearly done and like it was just a breakthrough with that. It was just getting stuff that I, that I was happy with, and because it was new territory for me, uh, it it took a while, and that's what and, and that's and I think because it was new ground for me as well, like me doing my own vocals, uh, that's what I think I was sitting get sitting guessing myself more more than all. But anyway, I've made some stuff which which I'm which I'm into, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited for people to, to hear it. Yeah. Dude, huge respect. And um, man, yeah, it's like, you know, putting your voice on a record is like a whole new world of like vulnerability. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. it is such a such a different thing. And, you know, like in the world of, you know, like, like I'm from LA and there's a lot of recording industry people whose jobs is just vocals. They will, and I'm not talking about singing. They, like their job is only just to record and produce vocals. It's like, yeah, I do vocal production. It's like there's a yeah, person who just does I mean. that thing. It's because it's so hard. Have, yeah, and people have engineers who just mix the vocals. I've had to learn vocal mixing as well as well as recording and the, yeah. the mixing. I'm doing it all myself because I make I make all my, all my music myself. So, um. But actually, I have started working with one person for the first ever time this year. I've started working with a mix engineer, not for the vocals, but 
for the mix down of my stem mix of my tracks. Yeah. Uh, because up until uh, 2020, I mixed everything myself as well. But in 2020, I started working with a mix engineer called Matt Styles, who does Horizontal Studios. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been amazing working with him. But yeah, he's not helping us uh, with this side of recording vocals or like I I'm doing all the effects on all the vocals and everything myself. But uh, yeah, it is a whole new world. Uh, and it, it is quite specialized. So this, that, that was what I was stuck with, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, like I think anyone who had a demo in the demo folder, <laughs> like here's this like, well, totally, uh, you know, <laughs> relate i mean dude for, it's funny that you mentioned th this it's so cool because um I, yeah i went through a similar journey in my career where i was djing it was a little different but i, I was djing and was like something's missing here i want to try singing and writing songs and exploring that stuff and it was so scary <laughs> it was so so vulnerable i had to like you you put pause on your demos for a little bit I like canceled a tour and like did, it was like very dramatic because- Really? <laughs> yeah, like as you're so scared. It's so scared, like at least for me, that, that was the case. Uh, has that stuff came out? Yeah, yeah, and-, and, and You'll have to like, send us it. You'll have to send us a link dude, to what you're talking about. 1000%, it, it, dude, it's also funny because I was, it's so cool to hear that you're doing your like vocal stuff. Cause I was, I was actually, I, I'm working on a bunch of new music and I, I, came across old videos of Underworld performing in the yeah. 90s. And I was like, oh, wow, this shit would like kind of work. I was like, this makes me think of Trick. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I'm going to put some. Good afternoon. I was like, <laughs> wait, yeah, here, let me mute everybody. Hold up, mute okay. all. Um, boom. Uh, but Pat, unmute yourself. Um, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, what was I going to say? Uh, it just made me think of it. But also, dude, I put... Um, I guess I've already been doing this for Trick because on the Elliot Adamson EP, uh, I did vocals on two of the songs, the, the Get Mental song and then Send It. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, dude. Um, You're seasoned in it, yeah. <laughs> dude, I just can't wait. Those are sick this. vocals. Those are, those are sick vocals. I love them. Dude, it's, I, they but, wouldn't and it, it's funny because that's, influ that's influenced me because what what made me get on the vocals is obviously Green Velvet's a massive inspiration to me and I've done three songs with him before and he's done like original vocals for them and that's a massive inspiration and then also then when Elliot put out uh, Electric Acetator Tots on Trick yes. and he did, yes. he done his own vocals and I was like oh fuck you don't need to be Green Velvet to do vocals like Elliot's done his vocals I was like if Elliot's doing them I'm gonna give them a go and then Elliot then well, released yeah. uh, Elliot released uh, Send It with you and that, that had the new vocals on it too. Dude. And I was just like, I loved that. And that, that's something I'm actually looking for a lot on Trick to go back to when you're asking about what I'm looking for on the label. Because if someone sends in with original vocals, I now have so much newfound respect for that because since I've started doing it myself, like I, I, I it takes it to a whole new level of product. Like I feel like now with, I'm still nowhere near the producer I want to be, but the fact that now I'm getting into recording vocals and writing lyrics and all that, it makes us feel more of a producer in, in my own head. Totally. Uh, like I feel like I've got so much more control instead of working within the uh, constraints of uh, samples. I find it so much more creative. So when I get demos through and people have done their own original vocals or they've worked with a vocalist and they've got an original vocal coming uh, that they've done with a vocalist, that just really impresses us and I'm always looking for that type of stuff now. And then also there's another reason for that because samples, I, I noticed someone in the questions asked something about copyright and samples and, and all that. And yeah, that's such a, uh, that can be such a nightmare as well. Clearing samples or getting them recreate, recreated. And there's been some instances where we've had stuff that was meant to come out and it hasn't been able to come out because we haven't been able to get the, um, the, the sample cleared and uh, but I mean I'm not saying don't use samples because I love songs with samples and I still work with samples and I, I'm, I'm signing stuff with samples all, all the time but it's just it, it, it is easier unless they're like royalty free samples um, 
I mean, you can get round it, and we we'll have we we'll have cleared some some samples, but it's just um, it's just a lot more straightforward <laughs> if, if you don't need to go go through all that process because it it can end up taking away all the uh, all the royalties um, if you you spend all the money up front on those costs, and then um, it's really hard. It can be hard to recoup that, but. Um, yeah <laughs> dude crazy man and these are such cool insights you know i think you know yeah sorry you know, someone's just someone's just asking the questions the b shop shop saying out was yes. it hard to clear yeah it was really hard to clear and, and we did it in the end and it, and it ended up costing a, a lot of money to do it and, and i'm glad i did it because we actually got it replayed at the first time we got a different singer to come in and sing it and it just it just lost its magic and it, it just did not sound the same. So then we just had to bite the bullet and pay the money and get it. And luckily we were allowed to clear it. And I'm so glad I did because uh, it's went and it's done wonders for me. And, so it, and uh, it's the song I'm most most proud of that that I've put out. So, but there is certain situations where we've signed songs from people and the sample didn't work out and we've got and we've got it redone in a different way and the and the new vocal has sounded as good or sometimes it sounds better than the original one so like there is ways of there is ways of uh of working around it um yeah dude one random question uh patrick haley live show at some point in the future would that ever happen <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't think so to, to be honest haley like i uh, she she wasn't really that up for up, up for it i kind of like uh twisted her arm was like no nah, come on you like i was listening to some of these songs and, and i've seen these vocals and like she's never been a singer before um but she does have a good voice i've heard her singing and stuff so i was like oh you can do these vocals so then we did them and then uh we made those two songs together and uh we're, we're gonna do more together but yeah <laughs> a, a live show maybe that's one step too far but you never know because to be honest, when when we first recorded that song, uh, those those two songs, she wasn't even going to put a name on it. She was like, oh, I, I'm not going to put my name on it. You just put it out as your song and it'll have nothing to do with me. And I was like, no, these sound, I love these. Like, I'm really, Aww. really believe in these songs. I was like, I think people are going to be in them. And luckily, uh, people have, uh, they've went down quite well. So I said to her, I was like, no, come on, you have to put your name on it. Uh, and also we need to do a photo shoot, we need to go all in, you need to be, have your face on it. So she went, she went from like not having a name, not being involved to doing her first ever photo shoot and like uh, having a, on the, like the video and everything like that. So, so she, yeah, she's gone around in a uh, complete 180 there. So she says no, no live at the minute, but you never know what will happen in the future. Cause we've got some ideas on the go for some, <laughs> for some more songs. So, I mean, Dude, that's you know, awesome. But <laughs> she'll kill us for saying that because she's like, it, <laughs> if, it, if it makes her feel any better, like, because I, I, I had never sang before and I was bad at singing. <laughs> um, and dude, you know, yeah, you just, it's like you, if you can, if you can do what she does on these recordings, like, I have no doubt in my mind that it could, it could come to life. So, dude, she's got a fan in me. <laughs> oh, dude, the, the duo live show would be sick. <laughs> um i just had to had to chime in on that but dude um back to back to the label stuff um here's a, here's another question i mean i i think it's a good segue from this experience here because i feel like my my experience kind of watching the label as a fan and kind of having you know released on the music i mean i can tell that you you care deeply about the people and you know I was in Newcastle with Elliot, um, sleeping on his couch for a weekend. <laughs> and then like, you know, Big Miz is doing a show and we go to that and then we end up like making some music together. And then Ben Hemsley comes through and it's like, you know, the, it just, it really felt like there's, it, it felt like I was in college again. Like, just this, uh, <laughs> like, oh, here's all the kids who make music and it's <laughs> all just like a bunch of like trick homies. Um, does it, yeah, I don't know, like, what was your experience getting signed to Hot Creations um, and like joining that family? And then how does it feel to kind of like switch roles and now you have your own label and you're kind of fostering this like community yourself? Yeah, well, I obviously I came up on Hot Creations and um, 
what, what, uh, one of the one of the things I loved about uh, one of the things I do love about Hot Creations is um, they had a kind of well, definitely in the event side and the paradise side, there was like a crew of residents, and like in the early days of Hot Creations, more so there was more people. It was like a core lot of artists who were releasing on the label a lot. Um, and I've always loved like Dirty Birds, built like a crew of like familiar art re re reoccurring artists who do who keep releasing on the label and minus Richie Horton. They yeah. I, I always like these type like Sven with Cocoon, these type of uh, crew things. I, I always admired that type of thing. So that's definitely something which like one side of trick which i'm trying to do but i'm not exclusively it's not like oh you to be honest i'm releasing music from loads of different people as well and lots of lots of brand new artists and i've got loads of music coming from loads of artists who've never released music before and i've got so much different stuff coming but at the same time uh i do also want to try and make like a a crew of of, of artists who feel comfortable releasing on the label and uh keep keep hopefully releasing with it um so there's like kind of like two set things going on at the same time and it's like obviously now you're back for your second dp which is amazing yeah, and is. i'm so i'm so grateful for that and uh i couldn't believe it even you said you were working on your third ep so i love that <laughs> i love that any artist who wants to keep doing who wants to keep releasing on the label like that i mean i, I love the idea of that and like will clark is a is another one he's released on the label and he's got He's just finished off his second EP. Obviously, Elliot's released on the label. Uh, he's done two EPs and he's done a remix. And then Ewan's done an EP and he's done a remix. And Ewan's got another EP coming. Sick. So there is kind of like a, a kind of a crew of regular people starting to, starting to emerge. But it's not really like a master plan, really. It's just kind of been, it's just how the music's worked out. It's just like, I, I've just really liked like the music from the, those people I've mentioned there and uh, yeah but El Elliot's played a, a big part in the label as well and he helps with some A&R and not in the sense that he doesn't he doesn't look over the uh, the email address um, demos at tricklabel.co.uk he doesn't do that but he has his own email address and Elliot's more like he's very got his ear to the ground of producers like he's He's that guy who's like on SoundCloud in people's DMs. You know what I mean? Like he, he, he's, he's very much speaking to a lot of up and coming producers. Uh, and so because me, me and him are, are close pals with, with uh, and he, he's, he bringing me a lot of music as well. So he introduced me to people like Alex Virgo on mm -hmm. the label. He introduced us to uh, Test Press. So, um, um, there might be, I think there's someone else. Mark Blair, um, maybe was that through through Elliot well, or no? Mark, well, I was aware of Mark Blair already, but then Mark Mark then put it in the demos, which I was so yes, so, that's awesome. So happy when I seen his email in the day. I didn't expect it because he'd been an artist I've been into for ages. So like, I love that. Like Ludes as well. He was someone yeah. I, I, I love, and he dropped a demo in the demo email address and I couldn't believe it. I was like, no way Lutz has sent us a demo. It's like when when an artist that, that I know drops a one in, it's like such a nice surprise. But also at the same time, you don't have to be a well-known artist. I mean, if you look at a lot of the stuff we've put out here, Morgan Cole, it was his first ever release. Mira, that was his first ever release. Mark Blair, even though he's been doing a lot on SoundCloud and stuff himself, this was his first release with the label. Same with Test Press, it was their first release, and uh, Hassler, that was his first release under that alias, and there's been a few of us, and we've got a lot of music coming from brand new artists as well, and that's something which I'm really proud of as well, and that's something which I'm also looking for. I am also looking for artists who are brand new. Maybe it's even the debut release, I've never released anywhere. It gives me such a buzz to be able to help someone and give them this platform and see their music released, and to be able to do it on all our channels and uh, that for me is is such uh, an amazing thing and one of the main reasons why I set up the label was to help push new new artists uh, so yes it's been amazing mate and the it's been the best decision and I, to be honest I wanted to start a label for years 
and um but because i was very much in with our creations i, I mean it was never like contractual or anything like that it's always been very um chilled with jamie jamie's so nice it's just been like i've just i just start sending him everything first i'd always give him first dips on on everything but then it just got to the point where some of the stuff he he, he didn't he wasn't into and i was i was amassing some music which was slightly different sound and it was just become the perfect time to do it and then and i'm so glad i waited and then now i've got like a better platform as well to um yeah just ho hopefully people keep sending in demos because i'm a uh, we, we've upped the amount of we've been releasing as well because when we started in 2019 we were doing like one it was kind of sporadic we we're just putting out whatever we had and then it kind of went to one a, one a month now at the minute we've upped the output we're doing like a, two releases every month and we have and we have been basically for the last year and we've got um we've got stuff planned two a month all year we've got like music planned for all the end actually i've just seen in the comments there someone said any comps planned Yes, we do. We've actually, actually, I was meant to mention this to you, Justin, to ask you if you've got anything for it. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. I've got the first compilation we're doing of various artists release where it's going to be like loads of different artists, but it's actually going to be techno. Sick. Uh, Sick. The techno VA. It's called Trick Presents Tasty Techno Volume One. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, uh, and at the minute, I've got 12 tracks signed and um, Elliot's on there, Ewan's on there. And then apart from that, uh, it's all brand new artists on the label. Mm -hmm. And like, I would say the majority of those, I think it might even be their first release. Um, the, there is there is two more known artists who, who, who are quite established on, on there, but most of the stuff is brand new artists. Mm -hmm. And um, it's someone's asking, is it peak driving? It's yeah, it's all type of um techno. And yes, we're still receiving demos for that because I'm still put I'm still putting it together. I think we're gonna be taking in those demos for um still a, probably another two months or something, because we've got quite a lot in the schedule. So the, there's still a good window for people to send into that. But at the minute I've got like 12 tracks on that EP. Uh right. no, it's <laughs> it's sorry on the chat, I'm saying it's demos at tricklabel.co.uk, not dot com. And um, yeah, so I think I've got 12 on there and I've got a, there's a couple of girls on there as well, which I'm buzzing about. Um, I'm always looking out for more female artists as well. I want to try and get more females on the, on the label. I mean, we've had a couple of remixes from Meg Ward and Amara and I'm hoping to do, to, to do more with them as well. We're talking about some possible stuff, but we're trying to get it right. And then Haley's done a couple of stuff. And then we've, we've got a couple of girls on this uh, VA as well. But I need to get more girls on the label. I haven't been getting... There hasn't been that many female demos coming in. Um, hopefully, hopefully it gets in some more, yeah. So, so yeah, the, the techno VA is... Uh, it, it, it's any type, any type of techno, really. And... Um, what BPM yeah, range? What BPMs are fair game? The, 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 anything. At the minute, it's from... One two six up to one hundred and forty, I think, at the minute. Good, good, uh, dude. One forty, man. I'm all about it. It's it's yeah. like it's right. That's like my. I feel like I've been joking. Like there's people who are like, dude, one twenty, one forty is the new one twenty eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, <Dude. laughs> um, I, I don't know. I, I, I do like I'm I do a, like the fast stuff. I do like the fast stuff as well. I'm a little extreme. <laughs> I'm extreme. <laughs> dude because 140 i'm like in my head it's in the middle because it's not 160 or 180 <laughs> <laughs> so it's all speed is all relative and then there's uh there's the dj little texas who just you know <laughs> like 200 bpm oh i have not heard that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like uh hardcore um but damn dude that's super exciting to me um you know i think uh you know, I think that now would be a good time. I mean, I feel like, dude, Pat, you're you're just such an inspiring dude, and it's, it's uh, you you like hit all of the questions I wanted to ask. Often, like just naturally. Um, of course, <laughs> dude. Uh, why don't we open it up for a couple questions from from the uh, from the chat? Want would yeah. that work for you, Pat? Yeah, yeah. I'll have a little look through the chat as well myself. Oh. Yeah. Someone has said, oh, trick merch. Yes, right. We've got a whole line of merchandise. 
uh, which is which we're just finalizing at the moment, which is going to hopefully be ready for by the time the gigs start again in the UK. I mean, we've got the first trick event back is going to be in um, is going to be in Edinburgh in August. Uh, so I'm hoping to before then we're going to launch the online shop with uh, all the merch, which I'm really excited for people to see. So, yeah, that's coming soon. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> Does age matter on trick? <laughs> no, 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 not a, not at all. I mean, like Morgan Cole, or at least Morgan Cole, I think he was like 18 or, or 19 or something like that. And then on the techno uh, compilation, there's artists who are, are a lot older than that. Maybe he's, maybe he's in the 40s. So like age doesn't matter at all. It's all about the music for, for, for me. It's not about... It's not about anything like that, but that being said as well, like the way the industry is now, like social media is such a big thing as well. And it's not something, it's not something I consider when I'm looking at uh, signing artists or not, because a lot of the music we've put out has been from brand new acts who haven't had uh, a social media presence or have just started a, a page and and don't have a big following and I know it can be really daunting as a new artist engaging with social media so that's definitely not a thing but then when when you start doing the campaign when when the artists do get more engaged on it uh, it, it it often does help with the uh, how the music's received so if someone is really active on social media it always is like if they're doing it in a, in a tasteful way it, it is always a plus but it's not something uh, which I judge the music on first and foremost by any means at all. But like, if people are looking for a tip, like obviously the, 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 that that is something as well which people have got to get got to get into now, these days. That's just the way it is. Unfortunately, with the well, I say unfortunate because a lot of times it's it is a, it is less and less about the music now in in certain circumstances now with the social media, but. Um, Anyway, that's a whole different that's a whole different tangent. No. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> can I ask you a question? Yes, mate. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard this tune that you've played somewhere. Um, Gisborne Park. And I'm just wondering if it's yours. I really need to answer because I've heard it ages ago. It's oh, right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Hey, it's it's not it's, it's not my tune. Uh, I I'll have to get me laptop. Two secs, two secs. I can get it. I can get it. Two secs. Dude, well done, yo. In general, if, if we could keep the comments in the chat, that'd be great. But Logan, that was that was well played. <laughs> Dude, um, uh, shout out Miles Hunt. I see you in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> also, shout out Bad Boombox who was scoring some uh, beer pong shots <laughs> while 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 the lecture is going. <laughs> Huge respect. I had to get the practice in, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Right. So that song, um, I don't know if it's still unreleased or not. Cause it was unreleased when I when I got actually got sent it by my management. Some someone sent it to my manager. Um, and my manager passed it on to me um, and it, it was unreleased at the time and I don't know if it's come out and it is by um, oh fuck it doesn't even have a name on it it's just <laughs> it's just it's just called it's a party demo July 20 dude everyone uh, label your artist names yes. on your tracks <laughs> yeah that is that is a massive bit of advice yeah you need to put all the information on on the file you need to put your name on the file definitely dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> um here's another question uh do you prefer fully mastered tracks when sending demos um it's not ne it's not necessary but it does it does help like yeah i mean if you if you look into i mean it's it's so competitive you know what i mean so like you want the track to be polished you want it you want it to be the best possible one so i think like um i wouldn't spend a fortune on on the mastering but like 
there's 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 like websites you can get that can do them for like 20 quid or something like that but i mean i i don't know i mean i didn't when i was sending demos to hot creations initially uh I, they weren't mastered uh they were just i had mastered them myself on logic like very shit masters and uh i, I never got them professionally mastered when i was sending off demos but i suppose it, it does help though but yeah yeah the, dude, I, I feel you. Um, yeah, I feel like being able to crank out your own self master, even if it's not amazing, is yes. is good. Yeah, um, you've got to, <laughs> Yeah, you've definitely try and master it yourself. Definitely, if, if, if definitely try and do that. I mean, there's loads of tutorials online that can just show you a few settings in Logic or Ableton or whatever, and it can just like make a difference. So try. You definitely got to try and master it yourself a bit. Dude, here's another question. Um, what are the biggest mistakes people make when sending demos? Not putting their name on the track, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I always prefer my perfect way to get demos is um, a private SoundCloud playlist. So all the tracks that you send in are just in one playlist. So you don't need it on the email. Keep clicking over on loads of different songs. So you've got them all in one playlist and um, private. And also with the, um, Download. with the down downloads enabled. Yeah, because sometimes I'll listen to a song and I'll really like it and I'll go try to download it and it'll be it'll be near when I'm about to go DJ and I can't download it. And then <laughs> that, then that then that then that buzz for the song might then wear off. And then by the time I get in touch with them or and ask them to send us the download link, the hype in my head might have wear off and I might never try that song out. So like it, all, it always got the best chance if you put downloads enabled so it can be DJ'd out. Dude. Definitely. Okay, that's awesome. Um, and also uh, ones where, like, I'd, uh, links that expire, like a we transfer link that expires within a week, um, they 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 tend to like just expire before I get back to them because I'm never that quick. So like a, a link which doesn't expire, permanent link, and one which if it's not SoundCloud, just something that you can stream, like, so you don't have to download it to listen to. That's the preferred way, yeah. Got it, dude. So just to recap for everyone, get all of your demos in one playlist so that it's one click away for everything <laughs> and make sure that your tracks are downloadable. <laughs> um, dude, I feel like that's such a common one. You get the track and you're like, this is awesome and you can't download it. <laughs> or yeah, the link expired so you can't even listen to it if it's WeTransfer. Um, <laughs> I just know it's a question there. Someone said, "Do I ever for ask, ask for changes in a track?" Well, very rarely, because I don't want to try and like change what the artist has. But there, there has been a a couple of times where, well, there's been a few times where, like, I might make a little a little su little suggestion, um, but may mainly not. But yeah, some some cases, yeah. I mean that one of the best advice I ever got was was Jamie was doing that with me on Hot Creations. Most of my stuff that came out came out as it was, but I remember on a song called In My that came out, uh -huh. um, Jamie just said to us, "Just you should just take out that white noise uh, riser." He was like, "If you just take that out, the track will be a lot more underground." And I did that and I took it out. He signed it. So like now and again, I might make a little thing like that but not really i tend to tend to just try and put out what, what the artist has in their mind dude that's that's hilarious I, I i taught a little music class earlier in the year and uh one of the roles is like no swooshes allowed just because i feel like uh you know you can have a song that's great that has a swoosh but if you can still make it very satisfying without it then the rest of the track has to feel pretty good you know like it's kind uh, of a you can end up using those effects as a crutch sometimes. And uh, if the song works without it, then you know it's a great song. And I, dude, in my <laughs> smash, it's a smash, dude. <laughs> um, here's, a, here's a pretty interesting question for you, dude. Um, could you talk a little bit about how you approach setting goals, either for yourself as an artist or for your label? like? you know, you're someone who's accomplished so much in so many different areas. Do you think about your goals, like what you want to do, and then you try to achieve them? What's it like for you in that way? Yeah, yeah, totally. I have a, 
I have lo I have loads of goals like that. I'm um yeah, I, I I do I do set goals like that. I don't know, it's not really I don't know, I've never really thought of it like that, but now you've asked us, I, I do um I do I do, do that, but um I don't know, like with the label, it was just I wanted to up the um no, to be honest, I have a lot of goals. Yeah, I do, but I kind of keep them to myself and I just kind of like sure. work on them and I just try to like hopefully achieve them silently. And that's the that's more my style. Dude, that's that's really cool. You know, because I know some people they like they write them down and it's like they're very concrete. Do you do that or is it just kind of, you know, no, more I, I don't, I don't, I don't. And following your... Mm -hmm. No, uh, yeah, I don't ever write goals down. No, I, I'm I'm not like that. I mean, I have little like milestones in my head. It's all it's always like that. It's like I achieve something happens, and then it's like right, what's the next thing? Yeah, it, it's it's it just kind of evolves like that. Yeah. Um, dude, here's a, a more straightforward question: Does Trick have its own mix and master engineer to get tracks uh, club ready? Well. <laughs> yes and no right no basic i would say no first like the the all the tracks that have came in have been um mixed already by the artist or they've had them mixed by someone and it's been sent to us and then we've we've got an engineer who masters the tracks yeah so if people send in uh their own masters we always then ask them to uh take off that mastering and send us a pre-master and then we will master the track we we'll work with matt styles uh and he does the he does the mastering and um in regards to mixing all the all the songs have been mixed by the artist there's only been one occasion where one of the songs i felt needed a needed a new mix so i um i, got, I sent them over to the the mix engineer that i now use and he he mixed it and um we took that as a, a as a cost on the label, which the label recoup first. And then, yeah, so I guess in some cases, if a song does need a, does need a mix and I, be, and I believe in the song enough, and I, uh, then yeah, we will go and get it mixed, but usually usually not the case now. Cool. Um, we'll do a couple more if you're cool with it, Pat. Does that, does that work for you? Yeah, yeah of course. So, um, how, this is an interesting one. Um, how do you decide which of your own tracks to release on Trick or give to other labels? <laughs> well, that's been a dilemma. Uh, uh, and well, since I've started Trick, I haven't released a track on a different label apart from I put one on that NHS compilation. Uh, yeah. The song Totality came out on the NHS compilation last year. But that was for for charity so it, it was something it was something different but like since i've looked since i've started the label i've uh i've been releasing all my own music on trick mm -hmm. and um that's kind of the idea at the moment there's there's been some there's been moments where i've been like oh I would there's just loads of labels i would love to work with and i, I would love to try and send a demo to uh, uh maybe i might in the future um I mean, I'm not set in stone on it. The idea is I'm going to try and release everything I can on, on Trick, but th th there might be something that comes up which I feel doesn't fit Trick, which will be better on a different label. Uh, or, um, or there is bucket list labels for me, which have loads of them. I have, I have, what are some of those bucket list labels? Okay, so uh, Running Back, yes. good <laughs> label, is is an amazing label and i would love to try and do some on that and then um cocoon because cocoon was the the main label which got me into techno mm -hmm. so that i would love to send something to cocoon um and also uh drum code i would love to release some on drum code i mean i have released something on true soul the the right. sister label of drum code the more housey one I would love to release some on drum code. Um, actually, I would love to release something on defected uh, cool. as well, and also hot creations. I might go back to hot creations at, at some point. That that is the idea that I would uh, 
I would release some on um on creations again, but it's just I need to uh I don't know, I need the I need the music at the at the, at the moment. Everything I've got in the pipeline is coming on trick, but we'll see how things work out. Dude, that's awesome. And um yeah, you know, I think uh it's it's cool to hear that you're so interested in releasing on these other labels. Like I'm curious, like what um what drives that? Is it like you being a fan of these labels and just like the except like how would you describe that? <laughs> yeah, I'm a yeah, I'm a massive fan of those of those labels I just said there. Uh, so just for it would just be like going back to goals, like they are some of my long term goals to to be able to do that, and I just it would just be so cool for for me to to do that. But it's that dilemma because I feel like if I release on a different label like that it would be amazing but then also i'm like ah i've got tricky and i put this much time into it kind of feels daft not 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 to be released on trick but um there's there's positives and negatives both, both ways but um yeah we'll see what happens dude that's awesome that is awesome um yeah someone really desperately wants to know how to overcome writer's block <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> if, if if I knew the answer, um, but what I what I what I find helps um, is switching it up. Like sometimes I'll start a new project. Um, sometimes I can like it's like flogging a dead horse, and I'm just going over and over and over, and I get stuck, and you go get stuck in a in a rut with that song, and your head's just in that, and you can't see any new directions. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll start a new song and I'll have them both uh, open. And uh, and then what I'll find is that, that when I'm starting this new song, some new bits for that then spark an idea or I'll create a new part which goes into that one. So that's something which helps. And then also listen to other music, listen to all the, all the different music I'm into and, and I can get inspired from the stuff I play because that's usually what inspires my music, my DJ and all the stuff I'm into. I usually, cause when I'm on the road uh, and I'm DJing and I, I'm playing all this music out, I usually end up making notes on my phone. Like, oh, I love the feel of that song. I love how that song did that. And then these give us ideas. So I think like come out of it and uh, get inspired by music and then, go, and then go back in can be uh, really helpful as well. Here's a question for you that's for me, like, for your DJ stuff, um, for your DJ sets, um, are you like, do you find yourself inspired by any like, you know, old music stuff that's like, you know, 20, 30 years old, like that you still play? I'm just curious yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on my DJ sets, like most music I play is old, really. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not one of those DJs who's just playing strictly all the brand new, uh, promos and, and new releases and stuff. I do play new music and I check a lot of new music, but the most of my stuff I play in my sets is either unreleased trick demos, unreleased music of friends, unreleased music I've worked on, or old music with a few new ones, like the old stuff. I just, uh, there's just, there's just so much like, music there there's now like 30 years plus of like electronic music there there's so much i just love that I, I just love the old stuff like most of the i prefer most of the old stuff to, to most of the new stuff really when there is new amazing new music which i play but yeah i yeah uh, i love di i love digging in all those stuff finding the stuff that people aren't playing that's what i that's what i that's what i buzz off See, this is this is pretty interesting because when I hear a lot of the music on Trick, to me, I hear a lot of this like nostalgic, like the, like a lot of this nostalgic energy. Um, whether it's like UK hardcore or like old school house music, um, you know, I think uh, I'm curious to dig in more on the the old music that's really resonating. Can you talk about like any artists, labels that you know, you know, stuff that's like fun foundational to your to your music taste that happens to be old yeah so i like um <clears throat> i mean my favorite artist who i've probably played the most songs of of anyone's probably paul johnson paul johnson like, uh, like paul johnson i keep discovering stuff all the time i mean i've got i've got a bit of a vinyl collection here 
mm-hmm. which I've never been. I don't play vinyl. I've never been a vinyl DJ. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't grow up on vinyl. Uh, I I started on CD decks, but vinyl is something I've I, I've got into, and I, and I collect stuff, which is I only buy stuff which is vinyl, which only came out on vinyl. If it's available digitally, I'll just buy it digitally. Uh, but I, I collect the the vinyl only stuff, uh, and most of that is old. I'll be buying off disc, discogs and stuff like that, and uh, I, I just uh, digitize it, rip it myself, and sometimes give it a little master, and then uh, I, I play a lot of them. So I, I love looking on that stuff, and there's loads of Paul. I've got like all Paul Johnson's digital stuff, but there's, there's stuff that you keep. I keep finding vinyls and stuff like that. So the, the, I've got a lot of that old Chicago stuff on, on vinyl. Um, so that's like one of the foundations and then, um, yeah, it's just basically just going down the rabbit hole on, on, on Beatport really, I'll, sure. I'll, is something, something I like to do. Like if, if there's a, if there's an artist I like and the label, then I'll just go back through the full back catalog of, if that label and then he, that can just, then you see the release on a different label and you just go all around there and it's just, yeah, it's just a lot of data. D- Digging, digging on a on on Beatport is a, one of the main places. Um, and and discogs, you said for the stuff that's not digital, is that your main? Yeah, way to... yeah. Got it, dude. Yeah. Really, really cool. Um, I, I'm I've, curious. Oh, sorry, what were you gonna say? I've just seen one question there. Someone's asking about any tips on acoustic treatment in your bedroom. Go for it. They say I've got a fairly basic setup. Yeah, that's true. So this is my studio here, which we're in, and. Um, I've actually, you can see these acoustic panels. Um, I've actually just got them uh, last last summer, and uh, up until last summer, um, I didn't have any acoustic treatment ever. And all the songs I'd made in this room, or in my old flat, or in or in my mom's house, none of the rooms were acoustically treated, uh, and I only got this stuff last year and I, and I got it because I started working with this mix mix engineer mm-hmm. and uh, he started telling us and he was like I think you should get it and the main reason I got it is for recording vocals mm-hmm. uh, because the, the it, it makes a difference to the recording of the vocals definitely um, but as far as making music without it obviously it does help the room sounds completely different now to what it used to sound like. I didn't realize how much of a echo the, the, and how much the sound was bouncing around in here until I've got it. Cause I use, and then when I go outside in the passage, you can hear like when we're talking it's like that. So it's completely different. And I think it has helped, but I don't think it's, it's, it's not necessary though, because like I said, all the music I released up until uh, halfway through 2020, wasn't done in an acoustically treated room it was ma- mainly done on speaker speakers or in headphones i mean a lot of the stuff i've released like my sam fender remix was made entirely in headphones on planes uh you know and it's the late that nah, came out on a major label sony and they they accepted it they, so they must have been happy with the mix of it uh so i, I don't think you, you need it but if you can get it, then yeah, go for it. I mean, it has made, um, it's definitely made a difference with the uh, recording of the vocals. In terms of the recording of the rest of the track, I don't know if it's made a difference because I think I just get so, I think you get used to your room and like kind of like ma- making making up for it yourself. And you know what, thing is what I, what I used to do is I used to uh, check on my speakers on my headphones and then in the car, I would check in the car what it sounds like in the car, and then also just on a on a Bluetooth speaker in the kitchen, and I just tried all these different environments, and if it sounded if it's good on them, then I was like, yeah, it's good to go. But now, now I'm working with uh, Matt, the mix engineer. Um, it's less of a concern, I think, because he's he's getting everything sounding uh, sound. It's so much better. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've seen someone mention about the the Kanye poster. Yeah, that is from my graduation. That was from the CD I got. Yeah, it's probably my favorite album. So insane, um, dude. In terms of speakers and high fidelity setups, it's funny. The uh, 
the studio setup that I used for the Tricky P that just came out. Uh, it's just uh, these earbuds. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It's like, um, exactly. Like, it's, it's, you don't need these fancy, fancy studios. Obviously, they are amazing, and I would love to have one. But I don't even know how to work out all the gear in them. I don't even know how to use them. Like, I, I just use everything on the computer. I now have the MIDI keyboard and I now have the Na Native Instruments machine. Mm -hmm. um, but I only got that last year as well. I just learned that during COVID. Um, and the MIDI keyboard I only started using last year. I've had it for a while, but I only started using it last year. I used to just do everything on the screen, like on a laptop or on my iMac. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Dude, I, I, um, I think uh, we might have to like draw this to an end. I have one final question for you, dude, in regards because the, you know, the focus here has been largely on the label stuff. Um, dude, what, um, you know, it's like, there's a lot of different steps when it comes to running a label, helping artists get their music out there. What's been the most like magical reaffirming like moments of just the whole experience of <laughs> running a label? Yeah, well, it's been absolutely amazing in so many different ways. Uh, and another main side of it has been the event side that that's came, oh. uh, because that's been as a goal of mine. I've wanted to do for ages as well, but I wanted to wait until we had the label. And to be honest, something that set the label back a, about a year and a half was thinking of a name. I was literally stuck on a name for like a year and a half, uh -huh. and then eventually got tricked. And I'm glad I'm glad that happened because I felt like I was in a better position then to, to launch the label and the event. So for me personally, the the events side of it has been amazing. And like we had five events last year, not not last year in 2019. And then um, we've got loads of ones planned. And that to me is just like opened up a whole new side of, of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, my career. And it's been that's something I put a lot of time in. And, into and like that's that's like my main passion is like the label and the event side they're like basically two or two of the same thing and then being able to just re freely release any music i wanted of mine like a group any songs together put out whenever like i made new rally in the summer and then it was out a couple of months later like i've never had that before but then also the communal aspect of the, of the label is absolutely amazing as well and like one one moment particularly that stands out for me if that is was you and you and McVicker when uh when when uh, uh signed street rave and it was due to come out and I met you in at Creamfields. Uh -huh. he, he was going to Creamfields anyway, um and he got in touch and it was like because at that point we were going to put the song out on tricks. So he's like, Oh, can I come meet you? And I was like, Yeah, of course. So you come backstage and uh it was before my set and um it was the first time I met him and he, he was re he's a really sound lad. It was really nice. And he, he goes to us, oh, are you, uh, are you going to play Street Rave? And I went, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And then, <laughs> uh, Hard <laughs> I, question. I, Damn. <laughs> I, I, I went up on the decks at Greenfields. It was fucking packed. And I'd opened my set with Street Rave. Let's and he, uh, and he went absolutely mad, man. He, oh, he was up on the decks and he was like crying. Oh. It was... It was just such a moment just to see that buzz on him and like so that type of thing that 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 was just those type of moments personified like in him then like yeah just being able to help people get their music out is a is a buzz dude what a beautiful note to wrap on dude that's that's amazing <laughs> that makes me so happy i want to go like listen to that song and just imagine <laughs> that moment starting the set <laughs> tears <laughs> you know like dude i that's that is beautiful dude and yeah pat i want to thank you for for rolling through everyone everyone unmute your mics and make some noise for patrick topping give it up unreal oh should i pat i just muted everyone so you could talk go for it wait hold on let me unmute yourself pat so, pat you there's a uh, oh yeah there's a i'm back yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, <laughs> Thanks everyone for tuning in. It's been fun and cheers, Justin. Dude, thank you for hey. rolling through. Hey, everyone Patrick. else. Yes, sorry, let me, let me let me just say something real quick, guys. Um uh, uh.
Dude, so I'll, um, Pat, if you're cool with it, you can give me the thumbs up, but I'll send the, uh, the trick demo email, like what it is through the, uh, the email list that everyone's on. Um, and um, that email list for everyone who doesn't know, I send out little like production tips and I do I try to do more of these types of lectures. They're really fun and just cool to talk to amazing people like, like Pat. So yeah, guys, thank you so much. Um, Pat, why don't you hop on and how can people keep in touch with you, follow your music, follow your happenings? What's, what's the best way to <laughs> keep in touch? Wait, hold on. Are you still, tr he's trying to unmute himself. Let me, I, <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let, let, let me, there's a button oh, in the bottom left. Yeah, you got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Let's go. Now, I was just type, I was just typing in there on the chat. So demos at tricklabel.co.uk. Yeah. That's the address. And, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be seeing everyone soon. Hopefully we'll be back at back at events soon. So something Dude, to look forward to. Unreal. Yeah, that's going to be summer of this year in the UK, right? Hopefully, yeah. We'll see. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Guys, thank you again for rolling through. I'll talk to you all soon. For those that don't know, my name's Justin. Um, and yeah, guys, have a great day in the US and a great evening in Europe. <laughs> I'll talk to you all soon. And everyone, you send me this everyone, tune on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, send us it. Everyone needs I've to check out. Logan Roberts of the NGL, I'll let you pay you for it. Mate, yeah. uh, send, it to the, send it to the demos address if you can, please. Just because yeah. my Instagram inbox is fucking carnage, mate. Um, yeah. it's yeah. uh, I need that tune, you know, proper need it. <laughs> I'll find out who it's by. I, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll need to ask me one, Jai. All right, I'll email you now. Sweet, mate. Oh, Unreal. Sorry, cheers, mate. Guys. Right, yeah. Right, cheers everyone, and I just want to say, if you haven't checked out Justin's EP on Trick, it's absolutely mint. <laughs> oh, dude, thank you, thank you for the love, and dude for uh, for having me back on. I can't wait. Uh, Got to finish up some new demos and some uh, some tasty techno. <laughs> Let's go. Alrighty, dude, right, great chat. Peace, guys. Have a good day. Bye.